Hey y'all, this is Billy and William from Permapastures Farm. Anybody that's been watching this series knows that we're on to the next flip. And keep in mind, we also do it on that we post this video on the day that it happens. Today, today is Saturday, so this is exactly what's going up today. In fact, I'll, we do this flip and then we immediately go do the video, go make the video and put it up. All right, so last time out, folks, we knew the temperature. Every flip so far has been about 150. So right off, we're going to check it out. And I'm putting it in roughly the same spot each time. Which is about the center of the pile. So it's starting to cool down on this one, and it's about, last time it was 150, and this time it's about 140. So from now on, it should start cooling down. But it's still breaking down, y'all. It's still generating heat. Remember, we're lassoing microbes, and we're putting them to work. But before we get into the actual flip of it, folks, part of what we do, because this is a process that has so many nuanced things, that's why we're breaking it down in flip after flip when it comes to the series. And we also explain another element and an aspect of compost making. So right off, folks, William, explain to everybody out there why we go through the trouble of making this compost. So this compost is acts as a soil amendment. Weeds are less likely to grow in well-made compost. Uh, it also adjusts pH, which the pH allows certain minerals in the soil to be bioavailable to your plants, so you have more nutrient-dense plants. Um, it helps with water retention and water wicking. It adds crumb structure to the soil, which makes it easier for roots to grow. Um, it keeps away pests. It does a whole bunch of things. And this, the results you get from this, you're less likely to get from store-bought or mass-produced compost. Absolutely. Well done, son. And also, folks, check out the work of Fukuoka. Japanese genius. He was permaculture before there was a permaculture. And basically what he figures out, what he, and it's, it's amazing because it really didn't need figuring out. It's what ancients knew for the longest time, that all of your problems either are worked out in the soil or made a problem in the soil, meaning that it starts from the soil. And if it ain't right, then that's when you're going to have problems. That's when genetic deficiencies, let's say in your seed, will make themselves more manifest. So that's exactly why, and also folks, I can't reiterate it enough. When you make that compost at your place, the microbes that are indigenous to your place are the ones that are getting the benefit through this whole process. We're making more of them. And also this is a, if you're using like fish emulsion or some sort of liquid nitrogen fertilizer and stuff like that, it just runs through the soil and it just lasts that season or you might have to reapply multiple times that season. Right. This is a long lasting, slow release fertilizer. But in some cases, there are times when that is, and we've just met somebody where that is, the fish emulsion and some of the others are your only options because then you're dealing with other pests like um, you know fire ants and stuff like that. So to people like Deep South Homestead that are in a position of where they've tried all this and in their position doesn't really work at all, they've come up with ingenious methods and techniques to get around that problem and they have to do, and then also the other areas where people say it will make put too much salt in the soil, that ain't the case if it's done correctly. So look at those other sources. Not everybody is in an environment like this and all these things may not work for you. But right off the bat, folks, I wanna point something out. That we filled also in this pile a ton of eggshells and coffee grounds and things like that. Folks, you're finding as we flip this, you're seeing less and less of the white in the eggshells. You see a little bit of this here, but even this is being transformed into the pile. So folks, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and flip it. And this time we're gonna show you another little method Instead of doing our Mexican hat dance, for those of you that may have knee, knee problems, William's gonna show you another method of dealing with that. You ready to do it, son? All right, here we are, it's completely flipped. And as you can see, it's breaking down more and more and more. The green is less distinguishable. In fact, it's almost indistinguishable, but it's still breaking down. We're over that halfway point, but folks, we're to the point where we normally kick in the sides like so, 
But also there's the understanding out there that I know people can't necessarily do that. They got knee problems, they got joint problems. That's where this handy dandy rake comes in. So you can, if you have to go around it, hit it with a rake. You can even come up the side just a little bit. Do the rake, there you go. So folks, remember, go back to that first video. We're getting a number of questions. I think people are just, they may just tune in and this is the first video they see, but to help you on your journey with this folks, this is why we've done it in sequential order. Go back, check out that first video we did that shows you the composition and why we did it the way we did. That's the whole purpose of this series, not to drag it out because we lack content because that's not the case, believe me. It's to take something that has a lot of nuance parts to it and breaking it down in such a way that makes it easier for everybody to follow along. And there are some at home following along with us. Folks, here we are, things are breaking down. Eggshells are breaking down, wood's breaking down. Everything's breaking down. The microbes lassoed in there doing all of it for us. So folks, give it a shot yourself. You can do this. It may take you a few times, but you can do it. So here we are, next flip. We'll do the other one in real time as we go along. So folks, remember, subscribe, tell your friends about us. This is some of the most consequential stuff that's going on right now. Here's the reasons why, folks. The reason we talked about why you need compost is we are at a time in America where knowing how to produce your own food and produce your own compost, making fantastic soil has never been more consequential. I'm gonna talk about it more when we get into the chicken tractor on steroids, but folks, we're at a time where you see inflation you're gonna see it, obviously you see it at the gas pump, you're gonna see it in the grocery stores, you already do. Folks, this is a way to mitigate that. This is growing your own money in a lot of ways. So we'll get into more of this on the chicken tractor on steroids, which is coming out tomorrow. Till next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. And here's one of the many reasons why. We'll see you next time.